We continue in Chapter 3, the cell talking about mechanisms of transport across the plasma membrane. We'll now talk about active transport. So this is often the movement from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration. Typically, active transport requires the aid of a carrier protein, but is also going to require the use of energy because it's going from an area of lower concentration to an area of higher concentration. This form of energy is typically uh, from ATP, which is considered the energy source of the body, adenosine triphosphate. So active transport facilitates going against the concentration gradient. It will use a carrier protein to facilitate this movement, but it will also require energy. This is a diagram showing uh, active transport moving a substance through the lipid bilayer, the phospholipid bilayer, the plasma membrane, from an area of low concentration outside the cell in the extracellular environment to inside the cell, intracellular within the cytoplasm with the aid of a carrier protein and energy. So you see in the first uh, picture to the left, lower concentration of whatever the purple square is representing, but you can see that it's in much higher quantity inside the cell, much higher concentration. So with the uh, carrier protein that's located within the phospholipid bilayer, the plasma membrane, this component is going to come up, it's going to bind the carrier protein, which is going to take it within the cell to the cytoplasm, to the intracellular environment. You see the ATP reversing to ADP. ATP is the energy currency. That arrow to the ADP just simply means that the phosphate bonds were broken in the adenosine triphosphate to become adenosine diphosphate. That is where the energy comes from, is that breaking of those phosphate bonds. So it's going to be taking the component active transport from low to high concentration, it is going to require a carrier protein as well as an energy source, primarily ATP. Endocytosis is a process in which large molecules, uh, single-celled organisms such as bacteria and droplets or fluid containing dissolved substances enter cells through endocytosis, bringing it inside. A region of the plasma membrane will engulf the substance to be ingested and then pinches off the rest of the membrane, enclosing the substances in a vesicle. A vesicle is just a term given to a component that's going to, for movement. Endocytosis, the vesicle is going to travel into the cell and through the cytoplasm. There's basically two types of endocytosis. There's phagocytosis and pinocytosis. Phagocytosis is cell eating. This would be uh, substances such as large particles or bacteria, whereas pinocytosis set stands for cell drinking. So this would be uh, droplets of fluid. So this is an image of phagocytosis or cell eating occurs when the cell engulfs bacteria or other large particles. So you can see the bacteria representation here in the extracellular fluid. It's going to come up to the plasma membrane. It's going to be enclosed. The plasma membrane is going to pinch off and take the vesicle within the cell. You can see the bacteria is enclosed within this vesicle, which is basically just the plasma membrane that has been pinched off and wrapped around this bacterium in this instance to take it within the cell. Penocytosis, on the other hand, means cell drinking, and it occurs when the cell engulfs droplets of extracellular fluid and the dissolved substances that are contained within. Again, the process is pretty much the same, just the difference between uh, droplets of fluid versus um, components such as cell eating 
in that it will again come up to the plasma membrane. Plasma membrane will engulf it, uh, pinch around it, and take the vesicle within the cell, the cytoplasm. Exocytosis, on the other hand, is a process uh, whereby large molecule, molecules leave the cell. They exit the cell. Ex exocytosis. Again, large molecules are enclosed in a membrane-bound vesicle that travel to the plasma membrane where they are released outside or extracellular to the, to the cell. So they're released in the extracellular environment. So in exocytosis, you see we're starting within the cell in the cytoplasm. <coughs> Pardon me. In step one, the vesicle is going to move through the cytoplasm toward the plasma membrane. This may be a protein or hormone that this particular cell has made. In step two, the membrane of the vesicle from within the cell is going to fuse with the plasma membrane surrounding the cell. And the vesicle is going to spill its contents. Basically, it's just going to merge and be released its contents to the extracellular fluid outside the cell. Inside the cytoplasm of eukaryotic cells are membrane-bound organelles, and this is a primary difference between, between prokaryotic and eukaryotic. We have several different membrane-bound organelles. The nucleus, the mitochondria, the nucleus is where the uh, chromosomes are contained, or DNA. Mitochondria is going to be the site of uh, ATP production and also the endoplasmic reticulum is a membrane bound organelle that's going to be um, studied with ribosomes uh, play a role in modification and shipping of proteins to go outside either within the cell or outside the cell. The other organelles that are not membrane bound organelle also perform specific cellular functions. The nucleus contains almost all of the genetic information of the cell, the DNA. It's surrounded by a nuclear envelope, which is a double membrane that allows communication through the nuclear pores. This shows an image that you can look at in your textbook, a diagram of the nucleus. You have the nucleosis, which uh, is a region uh, within the um, uh, nucleus, which is a specialized region, we'll look at a little closer. The rough endoplasmic reticulum, you can see that it is continuous with the nucleus. You have the nucleus itself, the nucleosis, the nucleoplasm, which is similar to the cytoplasm within the cell, the nuclear envelope, the chromatin, which is just the dispersed state of DNA and its associated proteins, and the nuclear pores, which is going to be important as we uh, look in further chapters at uh, transcription and translation about the nucleus. It needs to be communicated with uh, components in the cytoplasm. The nuclear pores allow communication between the nucleus and cytoplasm. The nucleosis is a specialized region within the nucleus that forms and disassembles during the cell cycle. It produces the ribosomal RNA, which is uh, responsible for the construction of the organelles, ribosomes, as well as other proteins. The nucleoplasm contains the chromatin and the other nucleus content. The chromatin is just the dispersed state of chromosomes uh, prior to replication. The genetic information within the nucleus is organized into chromosomes. And chromosomes are the structures made of DNA and associated proteins such as histones that help to regulate gene activity as well as to stabilize the DNA structures. Humans have 46 chromosomes. We have 23 pairs. 23 come from our 
mater uh, mother's side and 23 from our father's side. Chromosomes are visible in the light microscope during cell division when they shorten and condense, typically during metaphase. At other times, the chromosomes are extended in that dispersed state and called chromatin. So this just shows the image, the individual chromosomes that are uh, visible during cell division, during the cell cycle, when they shorten and condense. Typically, this will be taken during the metaphase state. At other times, when the cell cycle is not going on, uh, DNA replication is not occurring, the genetic material is more dispersed and called chromatin. The nucleus is the nucleoplasma. Uh, it's made of chromatin and the other contents of the nucleus. Uh, as previously mentioned, the nucleosis is a specialized region within the nucleus involved in the production of ribosomal RNA. It's suspended in the uh, nucleosome uh, uh, The endoplasmic reticulum is an extensive network of channels connected to the plasma membrane, the nuclear envelope, and certain organelles. It surrounds that nuclear uh, membrane. There's basically two types of endoplasmic reticulum. There's rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Rough endoplasmic reticulum is so named because it contains ribosomes that are going to be the organelles that produce cell products of proteins. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum lacks ribosomes. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is involved in the production of phospholipids and detoxifications. Phospholipids are the components of the uh, plasma membrane, primary component of the pla plasma membrane. The smooth ER is going to be more numerous in organs such as the liver, wherein enzymes modify drugs to make them more water soluble and thus easy easier to eliminate from the body. And so this shows the image of the two uh, different types of endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplas rough in endoplasmic reticulum is studied with ribosomes, thus it's called rough. So these ribosomes are attached to the surface. Ribosomes are going to be the organelles that are going to be responsible for um, making the proteins the rough endoplasmic reticulum is going to be involved with modifying the proteins uh, before uh, shipping them, uh, before moving them forward to the Golgi apparatus that's going to be responsible for shipping them either inside the cell to where they belong or outside the cell. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum, on the other hand, does not have ribosomes. They lack the ribosomes. They're involved in detoxification. Uh, and producing phospholipids that's important for incorporating into the phospholipid uh, bilayer of the plasma membrane. The Golgi complex consists of a series of interconnected flattened membranous sacs. The cells, cell products are packaged in vesicles and going to be transferred to the Golgi, com Golgi complex for chemical processing and packaging. The Golgi complex is responsible for shipping proteins to other organelles within the cell or also to ship products made by the cell outside the cell. So these protein-filled vesicles arrive basically from the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So once upon arriving from, once these products are made, let's say we'll talk about a protein, once the ribosomes make the protein, we continue in the chapter endoplasmic three, the reticulum is going to be responsible for modifying transport it. across the plasma membrane. From there, 
They're we'll now talk about the Golgi complex so this for even further chemical the movement processing from a region of and also from shipration to a region of they're higher They're going to be responsible uh, as the UPS of the cell. Typically, active transport requires the aid of, of the carrier protein. So once it's these also going protein to filled vesicles arrive the from the rough endoplasmic it's going from an area at the Golgi of complex, lower they're going to release the contents to an area the of higher complex is going to chemically modify this form of the energy is typically as they uh, move from, from one ATP, which uh, is membranous, considered the energy uh, source of the body, to the next, to the Golgi complex. So after, after completion of the protein modification, the going Golgi against the concentration of the proteins, it will use send them to their final destination. This movement, but Some are sent via microtubules energy to the plasma membrane for export this outside is a the cell, diagram showing while others uh, are incorporated in moving the cell membrane through the lipid bilayer, the phospholipid. So this shows the diagram of the membrane uh, from an area of low this organelle serves outside the, the cell in the extracellular environment and packaging within to the cell. inside and the then cell it shows another within the uh, cytoplasm image with the aid of the carrier of protein the, and energy uh, Golgi complex so you see with an electron the first, uh, uh, picture to the left microscope lower concentration of whatever the purple square is representing so in here but you can see that it's the vessel much carrying the protein quantum the rough end Inside the cell, much higher concentration. Arrive at so the receiving side with of the, the Golgi uh, complex, carrier protein that's located contents, within the phospholipid bilayer, the plasma membrane. This is within this component. Uh, the Golgi complex, up, it's going to which bind is going to the carrier protein, these which proteins. is going to take it within the cell to the cytoplasm of to the containing the modified proteins. You see the, the ATP the shipping side of the into Golgi DP complex ATP is the energy currency and going to be that era to the ADP uh, their specific location means that the phosphate you see the bonds were broken in uh, the adenosine triphosphate they may travel the uh, to become adenosine diphosphate that is where the energy comes from outside that breaking the cell of those phosphate or they may bonds. be incorporated so it's going to be uh, taken within the cell the component Active transport lysosomes from low to high concentration that it is going to require a carrier protein macromolecules as well as old an organelles and invaders primarily such as bacteria ATP. Endocytosis lysosomes is a process in which large cells, large molecules, uh, lysosomes single cell organisms such as bacteria enzymes and droplets or fluid these lysosomes dissolve substances in a membrane through made by the rough endoplasmic reticulum it then sent the, to the Golgi region of the plasma membrane uh, complex will engulf the substance for additional to be ingested and then pinches off the lysosomes of the right membrane uh, enclosing the cells substances in a uh, vesicle Worn a vesicle cell is just the amino acid term given uh, to contained within the uh, component that's going to uh, within the for cell movement. or then recycled. Endocytosis the typically is going to in travel into the uh, cell and these cells last only about 10 days in the liver There's basically before being two destroyed types of by lysosomes. There's so lysosomes are abundant in cells producing vast amounts of digestive cell eating. This would be uh, Substances this such shows as large particles, step one, where a cell engulfs a bacteria through phagocytosis for cell drinking. Process. We so this earlier, uh, the lysosome is going to fuse with the vesicle containing the bacteria. So this is an image the of phagocytosis breaks the cell eating it down into when the small cell molecules the bacteria are of that diffuse into the cytoplasm. So you can see some the of these indigestible patients here may lead to cell by exocytosis. Going While to come up to the plasma within membrane, the cell. it's going to be enclosed. The Pace plasma membrane is going to is caused by the absence and take of the, the vesicle within the cell. enzyme that's responsible for breaking down the bacteria in enclosed cells. within this vesicle. It causes which the lysosome to swell because of undigested has been pinched off and wrapped around. Infants that have bacteria in this your normal to start, take it within the cell to deteriorate about six months. Penocytosis is on the other hand means cell of drinking and accumulating in the nervous system. When the cell and guts droplets of extracellular uh, fluid infants, and the dissolved uh, substances that are contained die, within, typically by the age Again, of four or five, is because pretty much the same, just the difference so, uh, between uh, there are uh, disorders droplets uh, of fluid versus uh, associated with components lacking such as cell eating these 40 and that it will digest it come up to the plasma membrane that may be produced in cells. Plasma membrane will engulf it. 
mitochondria is around it and take the vesicle within the cell. So thus the they provide the cell, the mitochondria provide the cell with the energy through the brain. On the other hand, is a process produced uh, whereby ADD. large molecule, the molecules leave the cell, cell they to cell roughly the cell. correlate with the cell's Ex energy demand. Exocytosis. Most cells Again, contain large molecules several hundred are enclosed in a membrane-bound vesicle that travel to the plasma or membrane, a double membrane where they are released. They outside or extracellular called crystal to, the, to the increase cell. the membrane so surface released in the cellular extracellular environment. And mitochondria um, correlate so with in the cell's exocytosis, energy demand, thus they are most numerous in organs starting with in the cell on the cytoplasm of ATP cells <coughs> in the muscle cells. In step one, the vesicle is going to move through the cytoplasm toward the plasma membrane. This may be a protein or hormone that this particular cell has made. In step two, the membrane of the vesicle from within the cell is going to fuse with the plasma membrane surrounding the cell. And the vesicle is going to spill its contents. Basically, it's just going to merge and be released its contents to the extracellular fluid outside the cell. Inside the cytoplasm of eukaryotic cells are membrane-bound organelles, and this is a primary difference between, between prokaryotic and eukaryotic. We have several different membrane-bound organelles. The nucleus, the mitochondria, the nucleus is where the uh, chromosomes are contained, or DNA. Mitochondria is going to be the site of uh, ATP production and also the endoplasmic reticulum is a membrane bound organelle that's going to be um, studied with ribosomes uh, play a role in modification and shipping of proteins to go outside either within the cell or outside the cell. The other organelles that are not membrane bound organelle also perform specific cellular functions. The nucleus contains almost all of the genetic information of the cell, the DNA. It's surrounded by a nuclear envelope, which is a double membrane that allows communication through the nuclear pores. This shows an image that you can look at in your textbook, a diagram of the nucleus. You have the nucleosis, which uh, is a region uh, within the um, uh, nucleus, which is a specialized region, we'll look at a little closer. The rough endoplasmic reticulum, you can see that it is continuous with the nucleus. You have the nucleus itself, the nucleosis, the nucleoplasm, which is similar to the cytoplasm within the cell, the nuclear envelope, the chromatin, which is just the dispersed state of DNA and its associated proteins, and the nuclear pores, which is going to be important as we uh, look in further chapters at uh, transcription and translation about the nucleus. It needs to be communicated with uh, components in the cytoplasm. The nuclear pores allow communication between the nucleus and cytoplasm. The nucleosis is a specialized region within the nucleus that forms and disassembles during the cell cycle. It produces the ribosomal RNA, which is uh, responsible for the construction of the organelles, ribosomes, as well as other proteins. The nucleoplasm contains the chromatin and the other nucleus content. The chromatin is just the dispersed state of chromosomes. Uh, prior to replication. The genetic information within the nucleus is organized into chromosomes. And chromosomes are the structures made of DNA and associated proteins such as histones that help to regulate gene activity as well as to stabilize the DNA structures. Humans have 46 chromosomes. We have 23 pairs. 23 come from our Mater uh, mother's side and 23 from our father's side. 
Chromosomes are visible in the light microscope during cell division when they shorten and condense, typically during metaphase. At other times, the chromosomes are extended in that dispersed state and called chromatin. So this just shows the image, the individual chromosomes that are uh, visible during cell division, during the cell cycle, when they shorten and condense. Typically, this will be taken during the metaphase state. At other times, when the cell cycle is not going on, uh, DNA replication is not occurring, the genetic material is more dispersed and called chromatin. The nucleus is the nucleoplasma. Uh, it's made of chromatin and the other contents of the nucleus. Uh, as previously mentioned, the nucleosis is a specialized region within the nucleus involved in the production of ribosomal RNA. It's suspended in the uh, nucleosum uh, uh, The endoplasmic reticulum is an extensive network of channels connected to the plasma membrane, the nuclear envelope, and certain organelles. It surrounds that nuclear uh, membrane. There's basically two types of endoplasmic reticulum. There's rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Rough endoplasmic reticulum is so named because it contains ribosomes that are going to be the organelles that produce cell products of proteins. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum lacks ribosomes. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is involved in the production of phospholipids and detoxifications. Phospholipids are the components of the uh, plasma membrane, primary component of the pla plasma membrane. The smooth ER is going to be more numerous in organs such as the liver, wherein enzymes modify drugs to make them more water soluble and thus easy easier to eliminate from the body. And so this shows the image of the two uh, different types of endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplas rough in endoplasmic reticulum is studied with ribosomes, thus it's called rough. So these ribosomes are attached to the surface. Ribosomes are going to be the organelles that are going to be responsible for um, making the proteins the rough endoplasmic reticulum is going to be involved with modifying the proteins uh, before uh, shipping them, uh, before moving them forward to the Golgi apparatus that's going to be responsible for shipping them either inside the cell to where they belong or outside the cell. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum, on the other hand, does not have ribosomes. They lack the ribosomes. They're involved in detoxification. Uh, and producing phospholipids that's important for incorporating into the phospholipid uh, bilayer of the plasma membrane. The Golgi complex consists of series of interconnected flattened membranous sacs. The cells, cell products are packaged in vesicles and going to be transferred to the Golgi, com Golgi complex for chemical processing and packaging. The Golgi complex is responsible for shipping proteins to other organelles within the cell or also to ship products made by the cell outside the cell. So these protein-filled vesicles arrive basically from the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So once upon arriving from once these products are made, let's say we'll talk about a protein. Once the ribosomes make the protein, the endoplasmic reticulum is going to be responsible for modifying it. From there, they're going to be sent to the Golgi complex for even further chemical processing and also for shipment. For They're going to be responsible uh, as the UPS of the cell for packaging and, and movement of these. So once these protein-filled vesicles arrive from the rough endoplasmic reticulum at the Golgi complex, they're going to release their contents. The Golgi complex is going to chemically modify many of the proteins 
as they move from one uh, membranous uh, sac to the next to the Golgi complex. After completion of the protein modifications, the Golgi complex is going to sort the proteins and send them to their final destination. Some are sent via microtubules to the plasma membrane for export outside the cell, while others are incorporated into the cell membrane themselves. And so this shows the diagram of the uh, Golgi complex. This organelle serves as a site of protein processing and pa packaging within the cell. And then it just shows another uh, image of the uh, Golgi complex with an electron uh, microscope. So in here, the vesicles carrying the protein from the rough endoplasmic reticulum arrive at the receiving side of the Golgi complex and empty their contents in within. This is within uh, the Golgi complex which was going to modify these proteins. After modification, the vesicles containing the modified proteins leave the shipping side of the Golgi complex or Golgi apparatus and going to be traveled to uh, their specific location. Uh, you can see the transport vehicle uh, vesicle. They may travel via microtubules uh, to the plasma membrane to be exported outside the cell or they may be incorporated uh, within the cell as well. Lysosomes or organelles that contain enzymes that break down macromolecules, old organelles and invaders such as bacteria. Lysosomes degrade old worn out cells. Lysosomes contain approximately 40 different digestive enzymes. These lysosomes, enzymes, and membranes are made by the rough endoplasmic reticulum, then sent to the Golgi uh, complex for additional processing. Lysosomes break down uh, worn out cell, uh, worn out cells, the amino acids uh, contained within those proteins uh, within the cell are then recycled. The mitochondria typically in life, uh, these cells last only about 10 days in the liver before being destroyed by lysosomes. So lysosomes are abundant in cells producing vast amount of digestive enzymes. This shows step one where a cell engulfs a bacteria through phagocytosis that we looked at process we looked at earlier. The lysosome is going to fuse with the vesicle containing the bacteria. The lysosomal enzymes break the bacteria down into smaller molecules that diffuse into the cytoplasm. Some of these indigestible substances may leave the cell by exocytosis, while others remain within the cell. Tay-Sachs disease is caused by the absence of a specific lysosomal enzyme that's responsible for breaking down lipids in nerve cells. It causes the lysosome to swell because of undigested lipids. Infants that have Tay-Sachs appear normal at birth but begin to deteriorate about six months as abnormal amounts of lipids accumulate in the nervous system. These uh, infants uh, die typically by the age of four or five because of paralysis. So uh, there are disorders um, associated with lacking of these 40 digested different enzymes that may be produced in cells. Mitochondria is the site of cellular respiration. So thus they provide the cell, the mitochondria provide the cell with the energy through the breakdown of glucose to produce ATP. The mitochondria number from cell to cell roughly correlate with the cell's energy demand. Most cells contain several hundred to thousands. Mitochondria are a double membrane organelle. They contain inner foldings called cristae, which increase the membrane surface 
for cellular respiration. And mitochondria um, correlate with the cell's energy demand, thus they are most numerous in organs that consume large amounts of ATP, such as the heart.